Yeah, just cleansed. Who said that? He watched as he slipped a finger in. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, I'm literally getting married. To Goren. We've been committed to each other for about like 20 days now, so like it's really, really serious. Anyways, we're really happy, and I'm really, really, really sorry if I took your man, but like, should have kept him on a type of leash or whatever. <laughs> In all seriousness, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Vincent, and if you don't know me, then now you do. Today, I decided that it would be funny to write a fan fiction. Now, I haven't dabbled in the little fan fiction area in like a year or two or something. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a hot minute. But I used to be an avid fan fiction writer. Like, I used to eat eat it up. Like, I love writing fan fictions. Like, it was so fun to me. I actually had a fan fiction that hit like 200,000 reads. So, like, not saying like I'm like experienced or whatever. <laughs> no, don't get your hopes up high. Don't. Don't get your hopes up high. But I decided that it would be fun to write a fanfiction about Gurren, specifically because I've never watched anything about... Uh, I forget what the anime name is off the top of my head. I think it's like Seraph of the End, Seraph No End, I don't know, something along the lines of that. I haven't watched that anime, and before you write about a character, like, if you've written a fanfiction before, you've written any piece of, like, liter literary work... I can't speak. If you've written any sort of, like, literary work, you would know that you need to have like preliminary research. So I thought it would be fun if I just watched Seraph at the end as like my preliminary research to doing the fanfiction. It's also kind of an excuse to just watch it because the show actually looks really interesting. To get to know Gurren a little more because I know nothing about my husband. So like it's, it's time to get to know each other more. And before that though, I need to decide what type of fanfiction we'll be writing. There's a lot of different tropes that you can write about. Like for example, there's like the one bed trope. There is enemies to lovers. There is... You guys get the gist of it, but first we have to decide what trope I'm going to be writing about and then I'm going to do all my research about Guren so I don't flop on his character. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I have <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six written. One bed trope, enemies to lovers, Omega oh, <laughs> Smut angst, and secret relationship. Now, there's what I really don't want. And as much as I would love to say it's Omegaverse, I... <laughs> I don't want to write smut because I've never written smut and I don't want to and I'm scared of it. Okay, we're gonna spin the wheel. I'm actually so nervous right now. It's insane. Well, let's hold one. No. Hold one. No. No, 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 no. Bye, y'all. It's literally starting. <laughs> By the way, it's two seasons. I thought it was only one. Girl, this is way too loud. It's literally two seasons and I thought it was one, so we're gonna be here a while. Anyways, this is literally the first few se Oh! Girl, you good? Oh! <laughs> That's not funny, who's laughing? Okay, I know I literally just- I literally started this. I'm literally two minutes into the new episode. I kid you not, I just got a comment from someone, and spoiler warning for Seraph the End. Someone just said that he was like a mass murderer. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yeah, I just cleansed. Who like, said that? Okay, my first thoughts before writing this is very like, I don't know what to do because we got the topic smut, right? Do I entirely know Grand's character? No. Did I only watch one season? Yes. Do I care? No. So, we're just gonna go into it, right? Because it's smut. I wanna have a trope, so I think I'm going to do an established relationship. I'm not very familiar with one shots. Usually when I like did write, I would always write angst. I love to go to angst fifth. And I used to also write multiple chapters in a story. So one shots are a little bit of like a new territory for me. And smut, I've never written smut in my life. I'm just gonna write and and hope and really manifest that this works out in the best way possible. Am I slightly nervous? Yes. Am I going to get his character wrong? A thousand percent. Is the smut going to smut? I don't know. Because I don't know if I can commit that to myself to A, write it, and B, put it on the internet because that is a little crazy. Hey. But we're just gonna get right into it, guys. I am nervous. Okay. I'm scared. I'm really nervous right now. Okay, let's just, let's just do it. Money, that money, cause I be the baddie bee. Okay, everyone, he's back. Um, <laughs> I am 
personally really scared. I'm nervous, I'm conflicted, and I'm really scared. I know I got his personality wrong, I know that. Let's focus on the fact that they're smart. The fact that they're smart is really concerning me right now because I didn't know, I know I didn't do it properly, and I am extremely uncomfortable with the outcome of what I wrote. Let's play Never Have I Ever. I've never used most of these words in my life. Mm, this is the story at Vincent's book club. If you want to go follow and let me know if I should actually post this down below. <laughs> if you guys tell me to actually post this, I will. Like the uncensored version. I actually... Mm, don't quote me on that. I might not because this is really embarrassing. I'm pretty sure that's how you do like male reader. You do like an M exclamation mark. I don't know though. But like it's been like a hot minute. But Gurren X male reader because... And the description is... Your boyfriend's been stressed at work recently. Luckily, you're there to ease some of that stress. <clears throat> a small sigh escaped you as you found yourself standing in front of Gurren's office, adjusting the wrinkles in your Japanese Imperial Demon Army uniform. A bundle of papers sat in your hands, and you were the unlucky soul who got to deliver these papers to Gurren for him to complete. To say you thought it was unfair was an understatement. This was the fourth time that you've been asked to do this in the past two weeks. Yeah, you were dating, but since when did that mean anything while you were working? Hasn't anyone heard of keeping work and personal relationships separate? You couldn't help but wonder if you were some sort of scapegoat. Now, here was my thought process. My personal opinion is that, like, I wanted to write one where A, it was an established relationship, I already told you that, and B, that you were also in, like, the Demon Moon Company, I think is what it's called. Like, basically the people who, like, hunt vampires, you were in that company. Because I don't think, given the world, he would meet people outside of that. Unless it was like a coffee shop, at, like AU-esque, like, then like I see it, you know what I mean? But like otherwise, like, like come on, like I think he's gonna... Yeah. You raise your hand to knock. Once. Twice. You waited a moment before you knock a third time. Come in, your name. Gurren's voice called from the other side of the door. You exhale a deep breath before forcing the door open poking your head into the room. How'd you know it was me, you asked, approaching his desk as he seemed fixated on some paperwork that sat in front of him. You tried your best to ignore the stack of papers on the side, all empty forms and sheets of data. This is also not proofread. I literally just finished it and then I was like, and then I like ate a cute little snack and then now I'm here reading it to you guys because that's I don't play. Violet eyes turned up to face you, a hand carting through his black hair as he then took notice of the papers in your hand. You offered an apologetic smile as he slightly sighed to himself. No one else knocks in that stupid way you do, Gran remarked, leaning back into his chair. You frowned, placing the papers next to the pile that was already lingering like a weight on his desk. Have you just been holed up in here all day, you asked, walking around the desk and leaning down to peek over his shoulder. He glanced up at you, pressing his lips to your cheek in a swift moment before shaking his head. I had a meeting too, Gran replied. You went, you asked? He shrugged. I slept through it. It was a boring ass meeting anyways. Figures. Okay, there, I just wanted some cute dialogue. That's it. I just wanted a cute moment because there is smut. Unfortunately. For both of us, this is- we're in this together, babe. Like, I'm- we're in this together. <laughs> he leaned his head back a bit, resting against your shoulder. Why aren't you heading home? I was going to until you told me you were going to be here late. You sighed, standing up straight. So I was just on my way back to pick up the new uniform I ordered. But they stopped at me and sent me here before I could go. They've been sending you here a lot recently, Gurren remarked standing up from his seat and walking over to the large couch in his office. He laid himself down, raising his forearm to shield his eyes from the bright light. You turned your gaze out the window. The view from Gurren's office was beautiful, overlooking a large field that was covered by the starry night sky. Like imagery, right? There is, there is some imagery for there for sure. I don't know if that's the actual view from his office. It is now. Also, before we continue, I found out that Gurren had a girlfriend and she's his sword. Oh, spoiler warning. He, his sword is his ex-girl. Oh, so... Oh, oh, okay. You walked over to where he laid, hovering over him for a moment as you leaned down a bit. You sleeping already? The lack of response caused you to laugh, straightening your posture and turning towards the door as you moved to leave before a hand latched onto your wrist. You glance back... You glance back at him. <laughs> you glance back... You glance... Bitch... You glanced back at him as he was now in a sitting position with violet eyes glancing over at you, a frown tracing his lips. Where are you going? He questioned. Ugh, I hate that dialogue. I need to change it immediately. To pick up my uniform, you replied, slightly confused as you watched his brows furrow. He gently tugged at your wrist to bring you standing in between his legs, 
leaning his head against your stomach as the grip on your wrist reached down to your fingers. That doesn't make sense, but like my imagination was like wrist, right? But then it like trickles down and he's like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, you, you get what I mean. Just stay here for now. I'll pick it up tomorrow, Grin reasoned, glancing up at you with tired violet eyes. You reached your hand up, pushing a stray strand of black hair away from his face with a scoff. You're going to remember, really? You countered as Grin's eyes slightly narrowed. I'm good at remembering things, was his retort, his other hand reaching for the back of your thigh and pulling you back. I'm good at remembering things, was his retort, his other hand reaching for the back of your thigh and pulling you a bit closer. I'm good at a lot of things, actually. <laughs> no, it's starting. I think I said this before, but I am someone who, when I did write fanfiction, like when that era was for me, I was very big on angst. So I like rarely did like kissing scenes and like, especially I've never done a makeout scene. I've only really done kissing scenes. So this is my first time ever writing like a smut fic. So take that into account before we continue, because this is what's happening now. His hand moved down to the back of your knee, urging you forward as you could feel yourself kneel to straddle him. <laughs> Heat rising to your face as he leaned in a bit closer to you. Are you nervous? His voice was a whisper, as if the words were for your ears only. He leaned in a bit closer, and you raised your hand to cup his mouth with a frown. You want to... here? It doesn't matter where, I just want you. <laughs> I can't be like giggling at me too loud because it's literally like 1 a.m. <laughs> so I actually have to kind of be quiet. Okay. You turned your gaze away, slightly shifting in his lap as you tried your best to ignore the blush that had reached your ears. A hand reached up for your cheek, pulling your gaze into a sharp violet eyes that stared. It was as if you were already undressing you with his eyes, a violet gaze lingering on your exposed neck. <laughs> Are you homosexual? A what? Tell me if you don't want to do anything, Grin spoke, eyes drifting back into eye color ones. No, I... I want to. You mumbled under your breath as Grin's arm moved to wrap itself around your waist, a smirk tugging at his lips. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. He surged upwards, capturing your lips and his as he pressed you further against him. You threw your arms over his shoulders in response as his hands moved slowly over the body he knew so well. He traced every crevice that he was already so familiar with as his fingers massaged into your lower back. You... <laughs> <laughs> he pressed kisses down your jawline, moving down to the crook of your neck as his lips parted, teeth gently biting down as you could feel your hands comb through his hair, grabbing a tuft of black hair and slightly tugging at it as his teeth dug a bit further into your skin. Oh! I wrote this an hour ago, but like, that wasn't me. You bit the inside of your cheek in an- <laughs> You bit the inside of your cheek in an attempt to not make noise, but Gurren pulled back, brushing a strand of hair color hair away from your face. Why are you being so shy? It's nothing I haven't heard before. Someone could be around, you slightly complained, and Gurren shrugged. The door is locked and no one's ever around or awake at this hour, Gurren reassured, pressing a kiss onto your lips as he leaned his head into the crook of your neck where you were sure he left a mark. Your voice drives me crazy. <laughs> this is so crazy. Oh, this isn't even the bad part. I know there's like, I know the next one is coming up is so, so bad. Your hand raised to his chest, his arm dragging you closer in towards him as he moved to catch your lips in his. You could feel his hands reach for your shirt, beginning to undo the buttons on your uniform as his mouth followed suit, trailing kisses down your neck. You stifled a moan as he slowly took off your shirt. <laughs> but like, why are you moaning when he's taking off your shirt, babe? Well, maybe like the kissing, mm, like even, you know what I mean? Like it's odd to me, slightly. Liddy, who the fuck is the writer that he took him out? Your shirt too, you demanded. Embarrassment reeling your voice is the only spark up at you. Take it off for me, he asked with a cocky smile as he moved your hands up, slowly unbuttoning his uniform as he watched you move. You're being steady as he took off his shirt before he gently guided your leg off of him so he could stand up, walking towards his desk as he pulled out lube from a drawer. <laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing, this is so fucking embarrassing. Okay, wait. You keep that in your office? Was your first question as he laughed. Who knows what'll happen, right? You can never be too prepared. He declared with a smile as he walked back over to you, pouring the lube onto his hand. Lay down for me. I can, I can do it. I can do this. I can do this. You laid back down onto the couch, using your forearms for support as you watched him get closer. His tired, yet lustful violet eyes trailed along your figure, tugging at the waistband of your boxers as he leaned down to kiss you, slipping a hand into your pants as his fingers moved to your- Right. Right. So, he moved slowly, teasingly as his eyes studied your expression. He watched as you turned your gaze away, using his hand to meet your gazes because he wanted to see you. He watched as he slipped a finger in. 
Your expression slightly contorting into one of slight discomfort. Discomfort. <laughs> your expression slightly contorting into one of slight discomfort as he bent down and pressed a kiss to your cheek. Are you okay? He asked, brushing your hair away from your face as you offered him a small nod. Just tell me if it hurts, okay? Like hot. Love that for him, right? But then the we because this is we just just hurry up and put it. <laughs> You almost mumbled, ignoring the blush that heated up your face. You're eager today, huh? Who wrote that? Who wrote that? That's not Gurren. You're eager today, huh? He smiled softly, another finger slipping in as you could feel yourself bite down at the inside of your cheek. He rocked his fingers back and forth slowly. <sighs> he rocked his fingers back and forth slowly and you irked to yourself. Clenching your jaw tightly as he bared at him. You're such a tease! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hmm? What do you mean? He asked, feigning innocence as a smirk had reached his lips. Just be <laughs> already. <laughs> you whined rather lewdly and he smiled, pressing a kiss to your lips, and then chilling down to your neck as his voice turned to a whisper. If you want me to you so badly, then thank you. <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry, guys. Bye. <laughs>